Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'll be starting with the first system of the ATR7200, which is the electrical system. Electrical power is generated by a lot of sources. There are two batteries, the main and the emergency batteries. There are two DC starter or generators. There are two AC wire generators. And there are two external power units, one for alternating current and one for direct current. There are two static inverters, which convert direct current to supply AC constant frequency power. And there is a transformer rectifier unit, TRU, which takes in AC wild frequency current, converts it to DC to power the DC electrical system in case there is a dual DC generator loss. Since there's a lot to talk about in the electrical system, I have divided this topic into two videos. So this is the first part in which I'll be talking about the DC electrical system. So let's start by talking about the batteries. So there are two 24 volt nickel cadmium batteries. One is the main battery and the other is the emergency battery. The main battery is used for engine starting and as well as for backup. The emergency battery is used to avoid power transients on critical equipments during the engine start and this is also used as a backup in emergency. The main battery is rated 43 ampere hours and the emergency battery is 17 ampere hours. The combined battery time for both is around 30 minutes and it should be noted that using the batteries for emergency should be the last resort. The batteries are connected to their respective buses via the battery charge contactors. The monitoring of the batteries is done by the MFC or the multi-function computers. The MFC also controls the battery charge contactors. It analyzes the charging current and the DC bus voltage so as to prevent any abnormality for the batteries. These are the functions of the MFCs. There are two MFCs and each has two modules A and B which have a set of logics or functions stored in them. So the modules will be divided as 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. The controls of the MFCs are on the overhead panel like this, where you can choose and shut off any particular module in case of a failure. The MFCs perform a self-test as soon as the battery is turned on. On the overhead panel, the 1A and 2A fault lights flash three times. Then the MFC modules 1B and 2B are tested the same way. If any light stays on, it would mean that the particular module is faulty. The 1A and 2A modules are checked even before putting the battery on if the cargo door control panel has been operated before turning the battery on. So now when you turn the battery on, only 1B and 2B modules will be blinking. Now before talking about the DC generators, let's talk about what are the NH and the NP values. So here's a diagram of the Pratt & Whitney PW100 engine. So this is the high pressure compressor and this is the high pressure turbine. And this assembly of the high pressure compressor and the high pressure turbine is known as the high pressure spool. Similarly, the assembly of the low pressure compressor and the low pressure turbine is known as the low pressure spool. This is the reduction gearbox and this is where the propeller is connected like this. Now, in both NH and NP, the N stands for RPM. H is the high pressure spool, which comprises of the high pressure compressor and the high pressure turbine of the engine. So the RPM value of the high pressure spool is the NH value. The P stands for propeller. So the RPM value of the propeller is the NP value. So NH will be the RPM value over here, which is the high pressure compressor and the high pressure turbine assembly, the high pressure spool. And the NP will be the RPM value of this propeller. Okay, now talking about the DC starter or generator. So the DC starter or generator is mounted on the accessory gearbox, which is driven by the high pressure spool. There are two starters or generators, one on each engine. So this is the DC generator one, and this is the DC generator 2. Now since these are driven by the high pressure spool, the NH value will define their functions. So when the NH value is less than 45%, it works as a starter. And when the NH value is above 61.5%, it works as a DC generator. Between 45 and 61.5% is the transition phase. 
the generators are connected to the main DC network via the generator contactors. These generator contactors are operated by the GCU or the generator control unit. The GCU controls the generator contactor and the start contactors. So when the DC gen push button is pressed in and there is no external power connected, the GCU will start checking the conditions and when it finds normal condition for operation that is constant voltage from the high pressure spool, the DC generator is powered. The nominal operating voltage of the DC generator is from 27 to 31 volts and the nominal setting is around 30 volts. Now during engine startup, when the start push button is pressed, the starter generator switches to the start mode and the start light comes on. During the start, when the NH value reaches 45%, the starter on light automatically turns off and the start sequence ends. The DC bus 1 is powered by the left engine driven generator and the DC bus 2 is supplied by the right engine driven generator. In case of an engine failure, when any of the DC generators fail, the particular side will be supplied by the other engine via the BTC, which is the bus tie contactor. So here we can see that the BTC is currently in the open position because both generators are supplied. So BTC or the bus tie contactors connect both DC buses when only a single point power is available. Like during an engine failure or during the hotel mode or if a generator fails. Like in this situation, when there is hotel mode or if the DC Gen 1 is faulty, the DC Gen 2 will be supplying to both the DC bus 2 and the DC bus 1 via the BTC. So here now the BTC is closed and the generator contactor is also open for DC Gen 1 since it's faulty. The normal position of the BTC is open like this. It is automatically operated by the BPCU which is the bus power control unit. We can manually open the BTC by pushing this push button over here which will isolate both buses. So this is used in case of an unknown electrical smoke. Because since we don't know the reason for the electrical smoke, we want to isolate both buses so that the problem does not spread. Now the BPCU has a lot of functions, one of which is the load shedding function, in which the non-essential buses are not powered when the network is overloaded. So in an overload situation, the BPCU sheds the utility bus 1, the utility bus 2 and if required the DC service bus. An overload situation can occur any time, even when both generators are working properly. Though it is mostly common when one generator is inoperational. The shed amber light comes up whenever at least one utility bus is shed by the BPCU. So the shed amber light is over here. Another function of the BPCU is to monitor the external power. So the BPCU monitors the ground power unit's current and voltage prior to connecting that current to the network. An avail green light appears once the BPCU has checked the conditions and then you can press the on button to connect the ground power unit. And this is the shed amber light which comes up when the BPCU is shedding the load. Now let's talk about the hotel mode. So as I told you in the introduction that the ATR does not have an auxiliary power unit, the right engine provides with the DC power and bleed on ground without its propellers rotating. This is done by using the propeller brake, which is only available for the right engine. It's over here. So in this mode, the propeller remains stationary, but the turbo machinery keeps operating in the engine and thus the DC current is produced by the generators and the bleed air is provided. There are certain conditions for the hotel mode operation and these are firstly that the aircraft should be on ground. The second condition is that the propeller brake should be engaged. The third one is that the condition lever should be in the feather position to supply fuel to the engine. And lastly, the gust lock should be engaged. A point to note is that when external power is connected, the external power will be preferred over the power generated by the DC generators. So if you're in hotel mode and the external power is also connected, then the engine will only be supplying the bleed air. The DC power will be supplied by the ground power unit or the GPU. Ok, now let's see some basic schematic diagrams. So this is the normal supply when both DC generators are online. So here you can see that the generator contactors are in closed position 
connecting the generators to the DC electric network. The DC bus 1 is charging the emergency battery and the DC bus 2 is charging the main battery. We can see that the battery charge contactors are also in the closed position. The utility buses are connected to the respective DC buses. The DC bus 1 is also powering the DC service bus. The hot buses you see over here are hardwired to the batteries. And these are always on. The hot emergency battery bus powers the DC emergency bus and the DC standby bus. The hot main battery bus powers the DC essential bus in the normal supply. A thing to note here is that whenever the batteries are charging, like in this situation, when the battery charge contactors are in the closed position, the hot emergency battery bus will be supplying to the DC emergency bus and the DC standby bus. And the hot main battery bus will only be supplying to the DC essential bus. This means that in normal condition, the emergency battery bus will be supplying to two buses. And when the batteries are not charging, that is in a situation when the batteries are being used. So here the battery charge contactors are also open. And we can see these two arrows on the overhead panel. These show that both the batteries are being used. So here, the hot emergency battery bus supplies to only one bus, which is the DC emergency bus. And the hot main battery bus is supplying to the DC standby bus, the DC essential bus, and is also supplying to the inverter one. Now this configuration is because the hot main battery bus has more rating and it can power more buses when being used. Okay, now let's talk about the ground handling bus. So this is used to supply the DC load required for aircraft servicing on ground even when the battery switch is selected off. The ground handling bus can be supplied when the external power is available via the DC service bus. When the external power is not available, the ground handling bus can be supplied by the hot main battery bus if the cargo door panel is open or the refueling panel is open or if the passenger door is open. Next, I'll talk about the override toggle switch, which is over here. So this is a case of dual DC generator loss. You can see that both the DC generators are disconnected from the DC electrical system and both the batteries are being discharged. Now, since both the batteries are discharging, we can see that the hot main battery bus is supplying to these two buses and the hot emergency battery bus is only supplying to the DC emergency bus. And this is because of the rating of the batteries. Now the override position of the battery toggle switch ensures that the supply by the batteries will remain this way by overriding all protections to retain the emergency configuration so that the maximum load is taken by the hot main battery bus and not the hot emergency battery bus. Now if this situation continues, there will be a stage when the hot main battery bus's voltage will go down because of the number of buses it's supplying. And in this case, the second override is used. So this is a guarded push button, which we use when the hot main battery bus's voltage goes below 19.5 volts. By using the second override, the load comes back to the hot emergency battery bus and the main battery bus is only left with supplying to one bus and the hot emergency battery bus is supplying to the DC emergency bus and the DC standby bus along with the inverter one. Now the second override function should only be used when we are close to landing because we don't want to exhaust both the batteries before landing. Okay, so with this we come to the end of part one where we discuss the DC electrical system. In the next part, I'll be talking about the AC constant frequency and the AC wild frequency networks. If you watched the whole video, I would request you to please leave your suggestions or reviews in the comment section. And thanks for watching.